What's up, YouTube? In today's coaches chat, we are going to discuss the ATP's decision to trial off-court coaching. So it's nothing new um, on court or off-court coaching. There's been a few trials over the past few years, especially in the WTA um, and obviously Davis Cup and Fed Cup events. Um, but this is an interesting decision from the ATP tour uh, to allow off-court coaching. So just to go through the rules, so I'm going to look at Tennis 365. Uh, be sure to check out Tennis365 for your daily tennis news. Uh, really good site, which I use daily. Um, so the rules are coaches must sit in the to tournament's designated seats. So nothing new there. The players will have their sort of player boxes and coaches seats anyway, generally in the corner, which you'll see at Wimbledon next week. Coaching, verbal or non-verbal, is allowed, but it should not interrupt play or create hindrance to the opponents. So again, coaching won't be allowed during the points. Uh, but at the end of the points, coaches will be able to communicate with their players. Um, and in terms of the communication, it says here, verbal uh, verbal coaching is permitted only when the players are at the same end of the court. So you can't shout across down the far end. Um, Non-verbal coaching, hand signals, is permitted at any time, which I find quite interesting, any time. So does that mean in between the points? I don't see that happening. I can't see the player playing a point and the coach sort of, sort of directing the play. Um, hand signals are nothing new. Hand signals have have uh, existed forever. Um, you only have to look at sort of other sports like baseball and they touch the caps and stuff. Tennis coaches have been doing hand signals uh, for a number of years. So that's nothing really new. Um, it's just now it's permitted. Uh, but previously, you're not meant to have any type of communication between you and your player. But it goes on. It, it, it's, it's something that the ATP and the WTA Tour are aware of. And you only have to go to junior tournaments up down the country and you'll see coaches sort of making hand signals or coughing and sort of instructions to sort of players. So that's nothing new, really. Um, verbal coaching may consist of a few words or phrases, but no extended conversations are permitted. So that's pretty good. So again, they, they can't really start talking uh, in great detail over sort of during the match. Again, you've only got, what, 20 seconds in between points. So a couple of words here and there. Again, nothing new. Um, coaches have always come up with code uh, to, to, to get instructions to the players. Um, so, again, nothing really new. The only thing about new about this is obviously it's now legal. Um, coaches may not speak to their player when the player leaves the court for any reason, so toilet breaks or injury breaks. Again, I've heard of stuff that there's, there's definitely ways around that as well. Um, the coach may stay in the seat but there may be a physio or a sports psychologist sort of in and around the change of rooms. Again, players are escorted to and from the toilet, but these things happen. Penalties and fines still apply for abuse or misuse of coaching conditions. So it's it all sounds pretty new, but a lot of this stuff has been going on for years. The non-verbal coaching, the hand signals has been going on for years. The basic sort of couple of words or coach uh, or limited coaching has been going on but in code my gut feelings is this is all for tv i think it creates good drama it'd be interesting to see if the coaches are mic'd up uh, from a coach's point of view it'd be quite interesting to see what the top coaches are sort of saying to the players in sort of difficult moments or moments when they're ahead um a couple of comments online that i seen this week were it's going to really benefit the top players but not so much the the lesser ranked players which to a degree would be uh true i guess i think if you can't afford a full-time coach and the top players can then again that's that's a benefit to the top players my argument with that is well hawkeye tends to benefit the top players rather than the lower ranked players we we generally have Hawkeye on the show courts, not the outside courts. So, again, if you're playing at the top of the game, you're going to have more benefits than playing the lower ranked players. Again, is that right? I don't believe so. I think it should be available to all players, not just those players on the show court. Um, but again, that's just for TV. It's, it's it's just for TV and revenue to create a bit more drama. Uh, but definitely affects, I think, the overall sort of tournament aspect. Um well, do I think it will affect the game? Probably not. Again, from a from a coach's point of view, who sat courtside for County Cup and player plus um, player plus events and stuff, 
Um, I think sometimes you can interfere too much and have too much to say. And I'm a big believer that one of the unique selling points for tennis is the players on their own, that they, they really have to problem solve and work stuff out themselves. Um, I don't know, when I've sat courtside, I'm not really giving tactical advice and stuff. I'm mainly sort of trying to get the player either to calm down or to maybe get fired up. And it's more sort of psychological in terms of the, where the player is in that moment. So I think and that'd be quite interesting to find out what sort of coaches are sort of instructing to, that, to sort of the, the, the top players. Um, I think it might have an impact lower down in the game, sort of junior level. Um, parents may now feel that they have free reign to get involved in matches. And again, they do anyway. If you go to any junior tournament, the parents are constantly coaching or or giving instructions from the back. Um, and my, my big worry is just will that now become more commonplace and put a lot of pressure on the juniors and sort of the tournament referees because uh, it's allowed on the ATP. I quite like the fact that the Football Association here in the UK, you, you have like a parents area and you they really are discouraged in terms of getting involved, uh, either talking to the referee or talking to the players. They should just be spectators. And I think tennis needs that as well. I think we need almost spectator areas or parents areas of junior tournaments where the play uh, sorry where the parents can watch from but they can't get involved in the matches themselves because i think it just again adds interference and noise to a to a already stressful situation for the players um i think it'd be good tv i think it'd be good to sort of listen to the interaction between the players and the coach um do i think it'll have a huge impact in the game Probably not. I've, again, it's been going on for years. Uh, I know a couple of high-level coaches that came out this week and said, listen, it's been going on, but now it's just legal. Um, I do think tennis loses a little bit of that uniqueness in terms of players have to deal with situations on their own. You don't have a football or soccer manager at the side talking you through a game. You really have to sort of work it out yourself. So I think that's a downside to it. Um, but again, like most sports these days, it's all about TV revenue and making the game look more appealing for TV audiences. Um, will it bring more eyes to the game? Probably not. Um, I don't think this is going to encourage more people to watch tennis because now a coach can get involved. Um, so interesting. Um, it'd be interesting to sort of hear your comments as well down below. Do you think it's a good idea? Uh, what concerns do you have? Do you think it will benefit the best players rather than the sort of the lower ranked players? Um, and do you think it will become full time? Are we heading towards a situation where we have coaches on court? So in Wimbledon or at Wimbledon in a few years time, will we actually have court, uh, coaches on court sort of sitting down in a chair, sort of change of ends? Are we heading towards that sort of type of environment, which I think would be crazy um, because a lot of top coaches work with two or three players, really. If you look at sort of Louis K.O. in this country in Great Britain, he works with four to five players. Um, so I think that will put it a lot of demand on him so he's only going to be able to work with one or two players during a tournament that's going to have a knock-on effect for those players sort of ranked a little bit lower um but yeah interesting sort of coaches chat i'm not in my car today i'm at home uh had a haircut as well hope you i can sort of look a bit cooler um not some in terms of look but just heat has been really hot here in the uk um, if you do enjoy my content, I will try and put a few more coaches chats up. I do have a um, coaching video coming up this week as well in terms of video analysis. Be sure to check that out. I'm going to try and get that up uh, over the weekend. If you want to support the channel, there's a few links down below. And as always, I hope to see you soon. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.